Hello and welcome. This is Ruth and I'm back with a brand new kit from Tonic Studios. This is kit number 64 and it's called the Terrific Telephone Treat Box Kit. So let's just dive right in. I'll open the box up and then we'll have a little look at what's inside. I'll not spend too long doing that and then we'll see what all we can make with the contents of this. So while I'm opening this up and having a look, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy it at the end, give it a big thumbs up, that always helps me. And leave me a little comment and let me know what you think. So I'm going to start off with the card inside here, in this lovely folder. And I always keep it in there while I'm working with it. And then that way all my scraps and everything are in a handy place while I'm working. And then I can come back when I need some more later. And they'll all be nice and tidy and not bend or anything. So We have lots of beautiful red and silver and black. And as you can see... Lots and lots of cards. So some of them are actually, we've got double sheets this time, and that's always really, really handy. There are two sheets of Chili Red Classic card. So that's this one, the lovely, lovely bright one. And then there is some uh, Black Smooth card. Now that's 300 GSM. This one is 216, and this is 300 GSM. And that's fantastic construction weight. Then we've got some Frosted Silver Mirror card. So that's a, not a high gloss one, but a satin effect. Then we have the one that I always shy away from showing because it always shows my face back in it, but it's Ruby Red Mirror Card. And I'm going to show you it quickly and then move on to the Ruby Ritz Glitter Card. Isn't that beautiful? And then we have also got Black Sapphire Glitter Card, Luna Silver Pearlescent Card, and two sheets of pure white vellum as well. This is my first time looking at the dies, so I'm seeing the front and the back of the uh, telephone box there, but I always like to look, as you know, to see if there's anything else that we could use these dies for, so that it's not just a, a one-kit wonder. And obviously all of these little pieces could be cut out and backed onto a piece of brown card or white card or whatever, and that would look like chocolate. You could raise those up on 3D foam pads. And then we've also got uh, some squares, layering dies and whatnot that we could use as well. And these little strips, I'm quite sure that even this shape here could be used as a tag, or even with that glue tab, it could be used as a fold over part in a memory book as well. But first of all, we really, really need to see that this is going to make this absolutely beautiful telephone treat box. It looks as if it's fairly simple to assemble, but there are instructions there anyhow, so you can follow along with the instructions or you can follow along with me or do a combination of both, but either way, I think we're going to end up with a really lovely treat box at the end of this. There's also a little stamp set that comes with that as well, so telephone, well done, have a treat, and then a, a little crown, uh, some flowers, and a little scrolly pattern as well there, so that could be used on all sorts of things as well. Now, let's have a little look at what's inside this packet. So that's what you're going to find inside this time. And there's a, an ink set here, and I've got the Merry and Bright, but you may actually have principal inks, which I think are grey. So there could be either or this one or the principal inks. And then we have this here, which is silver lining crystal drops. Really, really lovely silver metallic effect on that one. Then we've got this beautiful winter white glacier paste. Now I know quite a lot of people absolutely love to use the other white one. I've just forgotten the name of it at the moment but because you can use it white and then you can add colours into it this one has a tiny um, hint of silver in the white but I'm quite sure that you could add some other effects into that as well if you wanted to but it's absolutely beautiful just the way it is. Then we have this little ink dauber with the detachable foam pad on the top and then you're getting four extra detachable uh, foam pads for the top of it as well. This is actually really, really good because you can use this not only for creating backgrounds with your inks and then you can take this off and add a different colour with one of these, but it's really, really good for giving that beautiful effect if you just come off the edge and distress around the edges and ink it and it just lifts your cards to the next level. So if I don't do it in this video, I will be doing that soon with some of these. So hold on and we'll be back to do some of that. I'm just going to pop all this away right now and come straight back and we'll dive straight into making something beautiful. 
The first stage of this then is to make the little lid and it tells you here that you'll need to cut out one of the squares, four of the joining parts and then four of these little parts that go on around the top. So this is the larger square and you can see there that the cutting line is on the inside of this one and that's the bigger one and that'll be the one for the lid and this is the other piece you've got to cut four times and this piece here as well. So I've got that done and now I'm just going to take my glue and add these all together. So we've got that's the piece there and that these are the little joining pieces and then these are the parts that go around the top of the lid. So the top will be facing up like this. The little joining pieces will go on like this around each side and then you can add these on to that and join them the whole way around. So I'll go ahead and glue all these little tabs on first of all. Actually two different panels here and I thought they were back and front and whatever when I saw this little handle on for the door but actually you just need to use this one if you're going to use the door opening so you can have a box with the door opening or a box with the lid coming off and on or even a combination of both but whenever you go to cut out the side panels then you won't need to use this one if you're not going to use the door opening. So I'm going to go ahead first of all and use this one for all sides and I'll have a look at that other one later on then. So what I've done then is I've cut four of these and I've also cut four joining panels in red as well. So I've got the chilli red here and the four joining panels. I'm going to join all of those together but before I do that I've used the rectangular die to cut out some pieces of vellum that I'm going to attach on the inside here. Uh, I don't want this just to be open and I could actually have put acetate in there but seeing as there's vellum in the pack I'm going to attach all those. So I see that I will need to add a very very fine line of um, glue around the outside and I'm going to use my fine tip nozzle for that and once I've done that then I'll add all of these together and join all those panels together until I have a little cylinder shape. to make the little base for this so you take this die that has the little tabs around the outside of it the square one and you'll cut that out twice and then you'll notice whenever you fold this out that it has two short glue tabs and two full length glue tabs so the idea is that you have both of these cut exactly the same but you'll be rotating one of them by 90 degrees and then you'll fit them together and all you'll do is put glue on the two shorter tabs so when we turn this one upside down you'll have the two shorter tabs fitting on to the here and here and then you tuck them inside the long tabs on the other side as well. And now you'll put glue along this edge. 
and this one and tuck it all together. I've used glue there but if you feel like it you could use uh, red high tack tape as well or instead even. And then we've made ourselves a little plinth and I just want to hold that and make sure it's all, all uh, square before I it all glued onto the little plinth now and then I've got the little lid here as well. So there are two different dies for cutting the little crown out that goes on here and there's a detailed one and then a little plain one. I've cut them both out but I'm just going to use the detailed one and that looks like this and it looks really really beautiful when you put it on there. Now the, the plain one would be used as a little background and you could put this on top and then if you wanted you could actually put a little 3D embossing or 3D foam pad on the back and have that sitting up even more but I actually really really like that just glued directly on top of that like that so that's what I'm going to do glue the four of those around the outside edge of the lid and then I have stamped the little telephone wording there are other things there that you could use you could have the well done and you could have uh, have a treat and there are some embossing dies as well but I just thought that I really really liked in fact I'll show you what's in front of me here I have this and it usually sits on my desk and I just like this telephone part here because it reminded me of that so I have stamped it out four times and I've used the little rectangular die that comes along with that and I've cut that out and then I'm going to glue that directly above the, the, the glass I was going to say above the windows there because whenever you put this lid on I'll show you here when you pop the lid in place, you'll have a little space here to put this and you don't want to put it too far up so that the lid covers that. So I'll go ahead and glue all of this on. got all of those on now and that looks really really lovely. I've actually popped a little battery tea light inside there but you can't see it because of the really really bright sunshine outside today and I'm not going to complain about that so I'll take some photos of that later whenever I take this out. But there you are, it is there. I wanted to make the second one just slightly different from this one so I have cut out the doors and whatnot and I've made the lid and this time I have used this little die to add a bit of dimension on here and I've also cut the background part of the crown and glued the two together and popped that up on 3D foam pads and then I've made the little lid this way. Then I have actually made the little phone box up once more and I've got the door and everything ready here and all I did was interchanged one of the original side panels and made it into a door panel with the little door panel that I showed you earlier on with the handle at the side of it here because this one actually has a cutting edge cutting edge and a hinge edge and this can come back and forwards then. So then there's a smaller die for the square. The, the base one that I used for this is actually a larger one and then there's a smaller one at the top of that set and I have cut that out and I'm going to glue that into the base because when that door's open then you can see in there properly and you can see all those little glue tabs so I want to cover that over first of all and then you can see this time now it'll depend on what kind of card you use but I've used the 216 JSM card that's the Craft Perfect Texture Weave and it's really stable and it actually works perfectly fine for this one but because this one has this little piece up at the top that's quite narrow, I want to stabilise that. Now I could actually just put a pe another piece of card across there and make that a little bit firmer. But what I'm going to do this time, because I don't actually need that lid to come off and on, I only need the door that opens, so I'm going to glue the lid onto that. And I'll do that by adding some glue all around the inside here and popping that on. Now 
to make the little locking mechanism for that door we need to cut out one of these and two of these for each side of the mechanism. So this will be the little lock here and then you'll take these two pieces and glue them on to one of these. So you can see there I've already done that. I've got the... Can you see? I have glued two, two of those directly on top. I'll just do it again for this one and that will make it easier to see. There and there. And then the little magnet, that's one of the tonic 10 millimeter magnets from this little packet. That just fits directly inside the little hollow that's left there. And as you can see, I've already glued one of these on top. So you're going to need one of those for the front. That can go on here. And then you'll have one that you'll add on to the door. And I just need to put a little magnet on there and then glue them in place. Now I've glued those little magnets in place and they close the door perfectly. But I think on the other side of that, I would like that to look a little bit tidier. So I've cut another one of the side panels and I've trimmed that off so that there's half a centimetre on each side there and I'm going to glue that directly on top and then that will cover all that glue but it won't interfere with anything else and it'll also probably make that door a little bit more stable as well. I'm sure I didn't actually need to cover that other door, the second one, with vellum as well but I just wanted it to look nice and tidy from both sides when the door was open so that's it and there's the little door and there's the little closure and that's just a little bit different from this one it's just the other way of using it with the lid glued on and the door which opens and closes and then you could put something really nice in there and I'll have to think about what that might be Well I had made the two 3D uh, telephone boxes there and I thought the most obvious one next then would be a lot of people would like to make that in blue to make a TARDIS. So feel free to go ahead and do that and then also there's the option of using this with the pieces put back in again with 3D foam pads in, in brown, the whole thing in brown of course, and make a bar of chocolate as well. But I just thought that uh, to finish up that I would make a little card. So I've got my card blank here and some of the frosted silver satin effect mirror card there and then I took one of the dies from this older stamp club I can't remember the name but there it is and it's to do with the moon um, and I have cut this onto the white card and I wanted to make this into like a snowy scene now I know um, this would make a beautiful card for Christmas I've used the glitter card here and by the time this is launched, obviously Christmas will be over. Christmas hasn't even arrived yet when I'm making this, of course. But anyway, I've cut this out in white and I want to add some of this beautiful winter white glacier paste to the, the Christmas trees or the trees in the background there. And then a, a dot or two just across here. And then I'll add some snow along this as well. And I think that would make a really beautiful card. I also had the Just To Say, I think it was, printed out, I stamped it and cut it out with the die but then I decided not to go ahead with that but you could you could put on there um, just to say and of course when you've put that just to say you need to say what you are going to say so inside then you would put happy Christmas or whatever. Well I'll just go ahead now and I've got my little roll up mat here so that my desk doesn't get all messy and I'll go ahead with this and just enjoy this process.
Or you can see I decided just to go ahead with the bar of chocolate then. And what I've done is I've just cut out this shape, so it's the one without the door on it. And I kept all the pieces in the actual spacing that they're in here. And then I have gone ahead and used my brown markers. This is the hazelnut truffle. And it sounds lovely too, doesn't it? <laughs> and I've actually coloured down the side of those pads. But you could actually use the black ones and it wouldn't just be as noticeable anyway. Now I'm just giving a little bit of shading around all those little squares and that should make it a little more realistic looking. Okay, now that I've got it that far I really just can't leave it so I've got some crystal glaze here and I'm going to put some of that out onto my mat and take a little brush and go over this very thinly just to give it a little glaze. I finished the card now and it's actually really really simple to put the rest of it together so I really just I added a piece of vellum around there and ripped it so that it looked like I had got into the bar of chocolate in a hurry, um, as I usually do. <laughs> and then I wrapped a little piece of card around there with the stamp from the kit on it in the beautiful turquoise this time. I think it's called Tuscan Teal possibly. And then I put this Have a Treat on there. So it's glued onto this part and there's a little foam pad in below there. This is from an older um, 6x6 pad from Tonic. I think it's, it's called Dream in Colour. That may still be available, so I thought it went really well with the colours there. And just was a little colour change from the ones in the kit as well. And I backed that onto some brown card and added a few sequins. So it's really, really nice. Um, don't forget to, but when I always say this at the end of the kits and whatnot, but do remember that you don't necessarily have to stick to the colours in the kit. And that's a very good example of it there that gives you an, an extra bit of something a little bit different from the kit as well. Not only in layout but in colour as well and we're all looking for that all the time extra mileage from everything we make, we buy so there we are that's everything that's my other card finished there and the two beautiful three-dimensional telephone boxes thank you very very much for watching i hope you really enjoyed it and i hope you do like uh, how i'm trying to give you extra ideas and things and uh, all of that as well so I do appreciate everybody who watches along and really, really appreciate everybody who takes the time just to hit that little notification bell and give me a like at the end of it. That really helps my channel along as well. And leave me a little comment and that way we'll be able to keep in touch. All my links to everything that I've used will be down below in the description of the video there. And they're all affiliate links, so I'll get a little commission on that, but it won't cost you anything extra at all. And I do really, really appreciate everybody who uses those. So thank you very, very much again. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye bye.